So let's start with finding the expected value of x. So the expected value of x is equal to the integral of x multiplied by the absolute value of the wave function squared dx. And in our case, since we've used separation of variables, we know that this expression here is equal to the, the x component. And remember, we're dealing with the nth stationary state here, so there's going to be a little n down here multiplied by a by a term that is in terms of time. So once you take the complement, so this is actually a complex term. There's an imaginary number. Once you take the take the conjugate and then do the square, the the t terms actually de uh, disappear. So essentially, x can be calculated by only considering this term over here. So all we have to do is solve this integral instead, so we don't have to worry about time. So in our case, we're dealing with the infinite square well. And so the associated function, early in the book, we've derived that this function is going to be equal to this expression over here. So the nth stationary state. And so now applying to this formula, now we can find the expected value of x. So the integral is going to go from 0 to 8 because we're in an infinite square well, so it can't go anywhere away from 0 to a. So we're trapped inside. So if x multiplied by the square of this function. And then essentially, once we've set up this equation, this expression over here, all we have to do is to solve an integral. So x sine square n pi x divided by a dx. So in order to, in order to solve this, let's try to get rid of the square symbol over here. So I'm going to use the double angle formula. So cosine 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square x. So sine square x is actually equal to 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2. So applying it to this expression here, the sine square x becomes 1 minus cosine. So here, uh, for the sake of convenience, I'm going to let 2 n pi divided by a be equal to alpha. So I'm just, I just don't want to write all those symbols again. So divided by 2 dx. So now all we have to do is just to solve this integral. So you see how it comes in two parts. So you have a relatively simple part. There's an x over 2 dx. And then there's a slightly more complex term. So there's an x multiplied by a cosine. And now we can get rid of this x time, uh, multiplied by a cosine by using integration by parts. So let us consider this integral first. So applying the so applying integral integration by parts, first we take the integral of this expression. So cosine becomes sine alpha x divided by alpha. And then we evaluate it from 0 to a. And then we minus. So now first we've taken the integral of this expression. Now we take the derivative of this expression while keeping this. So it's just a process of integration by parts. 0 to a. So now let us uh, try to substitute these numbers in first. So remind ourselves that alpha is equal to 2n pi over a. So once I substitute a inside, I get sine alpha a. So I'll arrive at a times sine 2n pi divided by alpha. And there's going to be a minus sine 0. So that, that whole thing is going to be 0. So I'm not going to write that. So for this expression here, this is actually also going to be uh, 0 because of the sine 2n pi. So if you draw the sine curve, you'll see that sine 2n pi is always equal to 0. So we get 0, 2 pi, 4 pi. So 2n pi is always going to be 0. So this whole thing is going to be equal to 0. So we don't have to worry about that. So now we evaluate this expression here as well. So the integral of sine of sine something that's equal to negative cosine alpha x 
divided by alpha from 0 to a. So now substituting the numbers in, I'm going to substitute 0 first, so the, there's going to be 2 minus sign, so I'll get 1 because the cosine 0 is 1, and then minus cosine alpha a divided by alpha. And so with this cosine alpha a, we actually have something similar to the above situation. So cosine alpha a, again alpha a is going to be equal to 2 n pi. So for cosine, so for cosine 2 n pi, it's always going to be equal to 1. So we're always going to get 1 minus 1. So this is also going to be 0. So we see that actually this entire thing is actually equal to 0. So that was pretty uneventful. So we went through all the integration by parts just to find that this is equal to zero. And so that is good news for us. So all we have to deal now with is, is this uh, rather simple integral. So we get x squared divided by four evaluated from zero to a. So we get two over a times a squared over four, which is equal to a over two. So this is the answer. This is the expected value of x.